Hello everyone and welcome to the Sea Live Podcast. My name is Sam. How's everybody doing? As always, I've got my Trista friend and podcast psychic, Mr. Christopher Barnes. Yay! Oh, full title tonight, mate. Well, I thought I'd give you the full title. Uh, well, why, why not? Why not? You deserve the full title, Christopher Barnes. That's that's what you yeah. do. This is very true. <laughs> what have you been? Uh, uh, what have you been doing? How's the new job that you were telling us last week? I love it. Absolutely love it. It's a it's a <laughs> real real lovely job. I mean, as an ambassador for Liverpool Media, it's brilliant to get to welcome in all the students of the morning, check the temperature on the forehead or the wrist. Uh, greet them, tick their names off. It's great. Welcome them in, showing them round. It's brilliant. Really, really good. And again, being part of the LMA family is what it's all about. And have you have you um, have you welcomed them all? Is there a new influx of musicians coming? Well, they're actually currently. I, I'm in the Liverpool campus. We've got a Liverpool and London campus. Uh, we're currently in the process of moving from Hope Street all the way to the Met Quarter. Um, so. It, there's still it's a still a bit of a building site down in the Met Quarter, uh, but we're hopefully going to get our tour uh, next week, so we can Hi. see what it looks like. So the the Met Quarter, yeah, is where LMA is going to be, and it's great. I'm 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 loving the job, like I said, and it's uh, it's it's certainly a good for uh, well, a I've... former like me that's out of work at the minute. Well, yeah, well I've been busy. I've been decorating, as you know, I'm decorating. A lot at the moment um and you know what i love painting and i'm not painting lma <laughs> you know? well yeah any any orange paint have you got any orange paint no? well i have got tomorrow my favorite part of decorating is gloss oh love a gloss <laughs> ridiculous little gloss so you'll have to call me mr glossy tomorrow mr glossy there you go yes. next week next week i'll call you mr glossy well, folks, please do make sure that you follow us on our Instagrams, Facebook, and our Twitters as well. So on Facebook, we are at CLive. On Twitter, we are at CLive Enter to One. And on Instagram, we are at CLive UK. Now, Chris, our guest yep. for this evening, she... I'm very excited. You're very excited. I know you were always excited. That's what we like. I'm excited as well. Um I'm Ladies and gentlemen, we'll just introduce her. It's uh, Brianna Musco. Hey! Chris, thank you guys so much for having me tonight. I'm excited. Ah, what a journey you've been on in the last twelve months. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. You you made it over to Liverpool, didn't you? Yes, I. Did. Yes, I did. We got to sing a few songs at the Cavern. It was probably one of the best bucket list items I was able to check off this uh, last 12 months. Now we always ask obviously people who are from not well not from Liverpool how big is the Beatles? How big are the Beatles for you personally? Uh, I mean I, I was born and raised on the Beatles just because you know I'm right next to New York City, John Lennon uh, you know one of the first albums you know I ever had was Sgt. Pepper's so <laughs> <laughs> and what what was it going into the cavern because we 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 take it for granted. obviously we don't at the moment because we haven't been for about a year yeah. <laughs> but what what's it like going into somewhere like that uh I'm, I'm sure for you guys it's like just walking down the street but for me it was monumental because of how many amazing musicians played there before they were somebody um like I said, it was very much check it off the bucket list. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm standing here right now. Uh, <laughs> it, it was it was wonderful. Everything I could have dreamed of. And 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 on the stage, not many people have actually. There's some great musicians from Liverpool. Not many have actually played on that cavern stage. So you've you've done well to yeah. Not there's so many musicians in Liverpool. And not many have actually graced it, so. Wow! wow. There you go. <laughs> that just made my whole week. <laughs> <laughs> and you play a Beatles song? No, no. Uh, the reason why I didn't do a Beatles song is because I'm from Jersey, and I know that you're never supposed to play a Bruce Springsteen song in Jersey. And I'm sure wow. everyone in Liverpool has heard every Beatles song ever twenty times. <laughs> well. 
Sam, you told me a little fact today about Bruce Springsteen, didn't you? It's only his birthday today. It his is. Bir- Happy it is birthday to the boss. To the boss. To the That's boss. Right. So, to the boss. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but on, Chris. The, the, artists, the artists that have come out of New Jersey is staggering, if I'm honest with you. Yes. People, I don't think a lot of people realise who has come from New Jersey and has made a mark on the music world. Frank Sinatra, Paul Simon, mm-hmm. obviously Bruce Springsteen, the boss, Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. uh, Lauren Hill, yeah, and and there's so many more, obviously Jersey Boys, but Whitney Houston as well, which I, I was just going to say, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, I did not know she was from New Jersey. Yep, Newark, right, New- uh, like 20 minutes. Wow. You, so, you're missing so, one important name off that list as well, Chris. I'm not from New Jersey. Halsey. Halsey's no. from New Jersey. We've got we Adam, Adam Bruce Adam. going. We're missing <laughs> hair off the list. Too, don't forget about me. <laughs> so, I'll name a street after you soon. I'm, I'm feeling this. They'll name a street. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so, what like coming from a, a place that is just a wash of talent? Musical talent. That's a great, it's a great question. Uh, so not only is it this amazing group of people in New Jersey, but I'm a half hour outside of New York City, a half a uh, hour and a half outside Philadelphia. So even the major surrounding cities are just an array of amazing talent. And what I love about it is because I come from a sports background, I'm a huge competitor. So if I see somebody that is an amazing musician on stage. I will obviously give them their praise, tell them how amazing they are, but I'll go home and I'll practice till three, four in the morning, you know, and motivate myself to get to that next level. And I think that's why we've been able to accomplish so much in so little time. It's that that drive and that motivation to want to be the best, be better every single So this is interesting. So you, you came from a sports background, did you? Yeah, I, I played, soccer, played soccer in university uh, until I got hurt, so... Wow. I don't. Do you guys play like football or yeah, right? Yeah, I like football, Sando. We like football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, yeah. It. We like so, it a lot. I like soccer. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so what? 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 Tell me about your soccer career. So, did that from college? Was that a college thing? And then you obviously played as much. Yeah, yeah. We um we won back to back league champions uh championships. And then I got hurt my second year of college, so I, I retired on a win. I'll take that any day. Um, and then turned full-time musician. Wow. Okay. And then <laughs> what? What? Did, because obviously, this, what position did you play? I was a striker and uh, like dominant left foot. So I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Who's the Who's the famous? Um... Who's the famous female footballer, American? Alex. That's right. That's right. I might be going to Tottenham, I heard, the other week on on loan, just as a yep. couple of months. Um, and did you get to that level where you potentially could have? Oh, no, no, no. I, I suck. But <laughs> Alex Morgan's fantastic. <laughs> I like the fact that you're honest with that. It's like, no, no, it's crap. It was rubbish. No. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, better no. musician, better musician. <laughs> I just won back to back league, right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we we had a very good team. Had a very good team. <laughs> wow, so all thing soccer. That's brilliant. Yeah, I used to be in great shape. Uh, soccer used to be my thing. Well, I know how you feel on that one. <laughs> so you say you've got this competitive background. Is w- is it was it installed by someone, uh, maybe a family member or friend or a like manager of a football of the soccer team? Should I say, it, it was it installed or is it just generally that's the way that everyone sort of feels? Uh, I'd say a little bit of both. Um, I have two brothers, uh, and everybody on my street, my neighborhood, growing up, they're all boys. So when we would play outside, play basketball, baseball, soccer, football, whatever we were playing, uh, I was only I was the only girl 
and I always wanted to like stand my ground and make sure that I was able to play with them. But at the same time, I grew up right outside New York City and people are like, go, 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 super competitive, super, I want to be the best. So I think it's a mix of both, you know, the setting of the people I was around on top of the regular everyday routine life being around, you know, New York City. New York is, is just an unbelievable place. Um, and it's just, yeah, when you, you arrive, I arrived in New York drunk. I don't know if... <laughs> That's the way to arrive. <laughs> I arrived in New York drunk. I go for a lie down, and then it all became a magical place. But it is one of the most amazing cities I've ever been to. Just, it's just so busy, mm -hmm. so manic all the time. You, you just, you, you go to sleep and the horns are beeping. You wake up and the horns are beeping. It's just brilliant. <laughs> It's to get in too. Oh, oh I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't remember coming in. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm fun it's funny you've never mentioned I that that you that you're right. You've always mentioned that you've been to New York, New York and you went to Rockefeller, and uh, but you've never mentioned that you were drunk when you first arrived. Well, we got upgraded to business class, didn't we? And then we were just drinking champagne because we were so happy to have a knife and fork on a plane. We were just like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> we've arrived and then um and then i had to go for a lie down but but new york it, the music and obviously new jersey it it's just a mass of of music isn't it because i obviously went on a little musical tour around new york and we were finding where bob dylan lived and we went to see where led zeppelin took the picture of physical graffiti and uh, and we did the trail from um the studio to where uh, John Lennon obviously was shot in the Dakota. So we we did the we did the, the track at the trail, and it's um, it's just brilliant. I love New York. Do you, do you get to obviously when you we before lockdown and and COVID? Did you get to do many gigs in in New York? Yes, uh, uh, that's like um, I always first and foremost love New Jersey, but New York is just a completely insane awesome atmosphere um like lady gaga new yorker um she's one of my biggest influences and i looked up all of the clubs and the lounges that she would play before she was lady gaga and so i did you know everything i could to make sure that i was able to play at those well such as like the world famous bitter end um parkside lounge arlene's grocery all those like new york new yorker you know yeah. uh lounges and clubs to be able to perform at and uh, kind of heighten yourself to that next level. Um, it's definitely something everyone should experience at least in their life to go to a live show in New York. Oh yeah, I think I think my, I think my, one of my bucket lists, obviously yours was to play, in, you played in the cabin. Uh, mine would be to play a gig in New York. Madison Square Garden or that, Radio City. I've got a pitch outside it and that's, a, that's as far as I got. <laughs> 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 for me it's Carnegie Hall for me Carnegie Hall really? yes yeah Carnegie Hall yeah I love that lo you lo go there you go there I'll go Madison Square Garden <laughs> I'll the hot dog stand outside <laughs> <laughs> don't worry I'll wait till you through the window um, <laughs> but uh, there's, there's so much music that comes from New Jersey jazz is massive isn't it Mm -hmm. Yes. Jazz, swing, obviously. Sam, Sam sings a bit of swing, don't you, Sam? I do. Yeah. When I was younger, I won a little uh, high school competition, singer of the year. I did a bit of buble, bit of Frank Sinatra. So I, I like to say I am a swinger in the musical terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I love I love swing. I mean, when I you know I, I grew up with nanny and granddad, and they brought me up on the likes of Frank Sinatra, the the Rat Pack, uh, Matt Monroe, you know that sort of. Um, swing jazz music uh, has been you know instilled from a very young age so i've always liked that sort of music and then recently the likes of buble um obviously you know who who who, who can not name buble when we're mentioning the swing stuff recently um I, i'd say what's bit, bit big over here now though and, and we've seen you you know people who do the show the jersey boys shows 
Oh, the massive oak tree. Uh, yeah. Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Yeah, the Four Seasons. It's a massive thing over here. Um, and there's so many bands and singers that they, they, they replicate the sort of the show the shows of them and through the career. But it's huge. The Jersey Boys in this country. And obviously the film the film helped that recently. Yeah. Uh, the big and was that filmed all by by you? I believe so. I think they did it in Newark and Jersey City, which is the two major cities in uh, in Jersey. And obviously, The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Getting, well, I'm getting of your... your... <laughs> you said you put it into me, though, so it's all right. But you were saying that the, the, the streets are named after the main actor uh, now, and it's a massive thing, isn't it, The Sopranos? It's a, it was a big, big series. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, like I said, the, the main character, I, his last name is, like, Gandolfini. Yeah. I don't know why it's escaping me right now, but... He grew up in the town right next door, Park Ridge, and my, I mean, the town's small, so I'm always in and out, and the main street is Gandolfini Avenue. Wow. That's and when you know you've made it, you get a street named after you. Well, our street will be coming soon, hopefully. That's Absolutely. The most... <laughs> so take, take me back, so you've just finished your, your football career, you've won back-to-back -back league championships, you've got an injury, what brought you to music? So I had played sports my entire life. And when it was finally close the chapter, you're done. Yeah. I had never actually traveled because I was always jumping from, you know, football match to football match. Yeah. And so when I realized that soccer was done, I wanted to travel. So what I did was I studied abroad in Florence, Italy for a semester. Nice. And that was pretty much the turning point where I realized I wanted to travel as much as I could and I wanted to play music for as long as I could. Because music is different than, than football in the sense that it will only take you so far in life, you know? But music, people are 100 years old still playing piano, you know? So I wanted to set myself up for a long-term um, lifestyle. So pretty much really, uh, met so many amazing people and was uh, exposed to so many different types of music because I'd never left America to that trip. And so all I knew was New York City, Philadelphia, and a couple of other cities, pretty much. Um, I had never been on a plane. So that was like, I've never been on a plane that I remembered. So that was like my I first plane ride. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was a whirlwind experience and it pretty much shifted everything I thought I ever wanted in life in like a split second. I was like, no, actually, this this is the answer. <laughs> wow. Gelato in Florence, Italy. That's the answer. Wow, and that was it. And the bug. You got the music bug. Oh, yes. I, I think we've all gotten that bug before, but that's when it hit. <laughs> so what 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 was it? Did you did you learn the guitar then? What what did you write songs? How 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 did you go about it? I had I had always played, played guitar as a hobby because my uncle is a guitarist and he has a music school. So I always got free guitar lessons, which goes a very long way. Uh, so it was always just a side hobby thing that I did. But then all of a sudden I had so much time on my hands and I was starting to get pretty decent at playing. And I've always enjoyed writing. And in Italy, I finished my song Forever. That was the first song I ever finished. And when I finished that song, I, I kind of like looked in the mirror and said to myself, like, yep, this made you very happy. You need to do more of this. We're going to create a lifestyle that is sustainable so that you can continue to do this and be happy. Well, it's not a bad first song, is it? Song is it forever? Because it's your first song you wrote and it's had 40,000 views online. <laughs> Maybe more. You're doing that injustice there, Chris. Just 40,000. 40,000 is... 40,000 people? That's a that's a lot of people. You know what I mean? You just, right? you, you just pen We can it. sell out the garden. Yeah, you <laughs> pick your first song and you just get 40,000 views. <laughs> I am very, very grateful. I, trust me, I had no expectations that, like, they were su exceeded beyond when we put that song out. But it's a lovely song. You've done a couple of versions of it, haven't you? You've done a, 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 a like, acoustic version and yes. you've done... A full band version as well. 
Yes. And it's just... I, that's my favorite thing to do is do is to like do the full band version, but then show everyone kind of how I wrote it, the stripped down acoustic version. And do you write most acoustic? Yes, uh, because I'm so comfortable, comfortable with guitar, I'll usually write on acoustic. Most recently, I have started writing on piano. We'll see if that actually produces any music. <laughs> well, yeah, because I have seen so you, you've put clips and there's little tr videos now, and you are sat behind a piano. And you say a piano, Sam, have you seen the piano she sat behind? It's massive. It's like the biggest grand piano you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> bigger than bigger than this one here. This I one. Keep... Yes. A little bit. <laughs> it, it's... And it weighs close to a thousand pounds, probably. <laughs> it's huge, but I, I, it doesn't escape my. I, I, you know me, I like guitars, and I've noticed that you've got like an unbelievable Taylor acoustic as well. My favorite. Well, that's. I feel like I'm cheating on her if I say that. That, that Taylor acoustic was. Um, my grandma bought it for me right before she passed away, so I'll never sell it. But she sounds beautiful. I definitely got definitely got a good one on that. That's but my my when I see your videos is the blue strat. Oh yes, she's pretty. <laughs> she's pretty. She's That's, pretty. <laughs> it's it's hard to watch videos and not just look at the blue strat and go, oh my god, I want that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Caroline. Caroline oh. is so good to me. She's beautiful and she sounds like a monster. Well, I, be I believe in the big, big believer of naming your guitars. Yes, this one's Betty. Um, I mean, you can, but I'm looking at the Taylor right now. The Taylor is Betty, and the blue one is Carolina. And was the Betty named after your, your grandmother, was it? Or Yes. Yes, that's a great thing. So that's, and you know what? Guitars like that, that they, they're more of a pleasure to play when there's a personal touch, isn't there? Oh, yes. I have a guitar in years i the the, and the uh the strat the blue one they're too good to me I, I can't justify spending money just yet no well you know when you when you're selling all your albums soon you're gonna have a room full of guitars so don't worry <laughs> you, have to, you have to think of all these names yeah i'm gonna have to go get one get one of those baby books that have all the names in them <laughs> when you write a song then because because we speak to loads of musicians and, and loads of different artists what, what is your starting point? Do you get a, a, a melody? Do you get a, a lyric? How, how do you start your songs? I am the worst to ask that question because <laughs> my mind is very, very, like, all over the place. Um, it, it honestly depends on the specific song. Sometimes it'll be, uh, like, a phrase, like a wording that I really enjoy that I'll, like, I'll put easy chords to just so I can think out what I want to say lyrically and then later Later on, go back and make the instrumental sound super fancy. Um, my new single, Never Stay, uh, that one started with the music. I started with that little tiny guitar riff um, and built around that, and then kind of scat sang over it, recorded the scat, and then put words to it so that I would enjoy like the rhythmic melody of the lyrics. And it was just a matter of the words that would fit, you know, uh, in unison, make it sound nice as like a co cohesive piece uh but yeah I'm, I'm terrible asking that question because every <laughs> single song is different some people will say that's a strength ask my stress levels i say that as a weakness <laughs> <laughs> obviously um over the last couple of months lockdowns and and things like that and covid is just destroying our industry but has it has it inspired you to write music yeah a hundred percent because I'm, I'm no way saying I'm grateful for this pandemic. Like this was awful, but the force of having and your part not go outside, be forced to sit down. If you think about it, just like back from our Europe, and I was set to go across the U.S., but because because everything locked down. I was able to actually sit down for a few months and actually digest all of those events, all those memories, all those crazy stories, almost dying in half the countries. Uh, and I was able to finally like sit down, digest it and write about it. And so I, I wouldn't have had that opportunity had I just jumped to the next tour. You know, there's nothing worse than tour, 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 and you forget to put out music because then like 
you never have another tour, you know? So I was able to write um, a bunch of songs, potential EP, and uh, the whole like next year, year and a half worth of material, which is such a <laughs> release off of my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because you tr your tracks are there. And I always say, you write tracks and then you look at them with fresh eyes. You can come back to it and, and things change. And I think dynamics of things change as soon as the band gets hold of the song. Oh, 100%. Do you know what I mean? And you, you, you've you probably written so many songs of the band and they've said, oh, try this, try that. And then are you, are you kind of... Uh, an artist who says, this is my song, do not change it. <laughs> no, nope. God, no. I surround myself, like, my band members are amazing. I yeah. will literally, I will go to a band practice and I'll just say, here are the chords. You can do what you want. As long as it's complicated, do what you want. Like, I, I have so much trust in them. You know, we've been doing this long enough. I basically say to them, I know you're going to make it sound good, so have fun, you know? Yeah. And, and the band, there's, there's, four, there's four of you in your band, obviously you, and is the three other members, is there? Yes. Owen yeah. Flanagan on drums, Louis on bass, Nick Ryan on guitar and backup vocals, and Brian Rojas on guitar and backup vocals. Wow. And, and, and has that been the setup for a while now, or is it? Yeah. We uh, we actually just, did a, actually just did a road trip to Nashville and did a, uh, did a live stream show. Uh, that I can't wait for everyone to see because it's been so long since people have been able to see us live. Yeah. Uh, so they should be posting that in the next couple of weeks. And I just can't wait for everyone to see how good my boys are. Like, they had a fun time. I wouldn't even say showing off, just really feeling the music and appreciating the fact that we were able to play again because it's been so <laughs> And are they all full-time? <laughs> and are they all full-time musicians like yourself now? Are they all full-time? They crush it in America, they are booked solid by so many different projects that I, I always have to give them like a two month advance so that they're locked in and ready for whatever shows we have coming up yeah. because they're that good. You know, um, I've had the privilege of working with so many musicians. When it comes down to it, these are the guys that I want on the big shows. They're so worth it. They're so worth the having to wait and schedule time management, all that stuff. So about you, these big shows, and you you say that your stress levels. Do you get nervous at all for these bigger shows? The bigger, so I I am great on stage, not a care in the world, like just having a good old time. It's getting me up the steps and on the stage. That it, it's different than soccer. It's different than football because, like, you know, you get to the match you're at midfield and. Before you know it, the first 10 seconds are over and you're fine. You're just going, right? Uh, but with, like, music, like, now like, I have to warm up. Uh, I have to make sure I'm hydrated. I have to make sure I can walk in my shoes because <laughs> I'm taking a few tumbles. Uh, but, you know what I mean? Like, there's there's superstitions in soccer. Like, I would put my, my left sock on before my right sock and then my right cleat before my, Like, you know the stupid stuff? But for music, like you really gotta work. Like, you could, you could okay stretch in soccer, and you know maybe pull a hammy. But in, in in music, like if I lose my voice, like I'm out for a few weeks, I lose money, doesn't look good. You know, you really gotta take care of yourself. So there's so many little tidbit things that go into it that I don't ever really bring attention to, but I know I gotta make sure I check them all off and do my part. Do you have? Do you have? Do you have? Do you have any superstitions? before you go on stage. Go on! <laughs> <laughs> she well does as well. So, yes, I have to drink three water bottles about five hours beforehand so that I'm hydrated. Uh, I'll do my hair and my makeup. Well, I'll shower four hours before. Hair and makeup's done like two and a half hours before. Warm up with the boys uh, like an hour before. Sit like a psychopath. And picture the set in my head before we actually do anything. Uh, and then right before we go on stage, the boys and I have like a little huddle and we do our saying and it's it's adorable. So, yes, yeah, Sam, you've got a few. Yes, yeah, Sam, you've got a few of these. There's something quite similar about Honestly, your superstitions I was listening there. to you then. 
Brianna, and I was saying tick, 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 everything. <laughs> like the water, <laughs> just the, the the general quietness, just like don't speak to me, uh, the huddle. It, it, it all makes sense. I, at least I know I'm going in the right direction. Where it works. I swear to God, it works. I don't question it. <laughs> it don't Three water bottles. I'll have a protein bar as well. It, it does the job. It's mad, isn't it? We all have. It's mad, isn't it? We all have little superstitions, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't remember what mine. My, mine's mostly. Um, I'm a, I, I'm one for making sure leads. Yeah. Leads is my um, why. Jack wires, Jack leads. That is my biggest superstition of the nodding, or is this technical? That is my, and I always, you always have that first note of something, and you think, please be in. <laughs> please, could you tear that? Grabs the guitar that's tuned down a half step by accident. <laughs> please be plugged. Oh, it happens because they're so busy on stage. It's because they're so busy on stage. Things get moved, things get, and. Yep. And it's that little moment when you're just about to Sam, because Sam obviously is in a band with me, and and he'll say goodie, and you know what I mean. We'll start with something, and my nerves have gone on that first note every time. Because you think we usually do tainted noise. love, don't we, to start? So it's, yeah. a, it's it, you've got a few drum. Dun, dun. Actually, we're yeah. all together, aren't we? So, but... I'll always, I'll always do a little test yeah, of a little drum, just so I know it's working. But, you, you have your tape out, don't you, as well? Like, got to make sure it's all safe. Tape, yes. tape any, tape any wires down. You, well, you, you are in charge of the band. Let's be honest. So you, you, you like, make sure that everyone's whipped into shape. I do like taping stuff down. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, lots of tape. Um, but I th it's mad, isn't it? How we've all got our little superstitions and little, little ways before a gig. Yeah. Really, and it could be the smallest gig it could be the biggest gig you've all we've all got those little superstitions and little it's weird isn't it yeah uh, only yeah. a few musicians we know this uh, and obviously you, you you went to nashville the other day and did a stream are you missing the buzz are you missing the buzz of, of the crowd that that hurts there's no way to describe it unless you're you're really talking to either like a, a football star or somebody that's yeah. performed under an audience that is vocal, you know? Uh, I, I mean, I never really would get a rush, you know, doing a project in school in front of people, you know, because nobody's really like cheering or anything. But when you're on stage and people are singing your lyrics, like, you know what I mean? I'm not getting that watching Netflix right now, uh, so <laughs> I miss it. I miss it more than anything. Anything. And, and obviously, you 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 do keep busy. You, you today you were posted a, a new guitar track on yeah. your Instagram, and we we will share that. I think I've shared it already. But these little things that you do are they they're pretty good. You 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 undervalue yourself when you undersave yourself when you've. You're pretty nifty on the guitar, aren't you? Thank you. My college major, it was very expensive, so I hope I could play a few things. <laughs> because I love the track, the Whitney track, the Whitney track that you did, the Whitney Houston track. Fun. That was a great track, and 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 the um, and the technical playing was very good. And behind you, you can you can have one of them next time. Um, <laughs> and and it's. It's on the blue strat, uh, and it it looks it looks great. It looks really good, and and obviously you're you're pushing these new things out, uh, sitting on set. Were you were you on top of the cab today? What were you sitting on? Right on, now? No, on on the video. What were you sitting on when you were playing your video? That you. The video that I posted today, I was sitting on my car. Right. Uh, in New York City, it is near impossible to find parking, and so. Because I found parking, I wanted to document it. So I sat on my car for that video. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. And obviously, we've got to talk about um, the new single. Yes. yes. Which is Never Stay. And it's people are very um, 
nervous at the moment to release music, but I think we should be releasing music because this is the time now where people are in the house a bit more, in the apartments, in the flats, whatever, and they can listen to new music. So I I I agree, push new music out now while while you can. Um, mm. And it's a great it's a great track. Tell us what what inspired the track. Uh, uh, my awful, awful, terrible ex-boyfriend. So it's a very fun, toxic relationship song. If you have any terrible memories with an ex, highly recommend jamming out to Never Stay. <laughs> there you go. But that's the raw emotion of the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the, the lyrics, um, the lyrics are probably one of my favorite stanzas and verse I've ever come up with because it was the first song where I, I know my grandma listens to all of my music. So with that in mind, all of the songs I've released prior was like, like, okay, grandma's gonna watch this. Like my four foot 10, 80 year old Italian grandma. Like, <laughs> but this specific song, I kind of just said what I wanted to say, you know, like a big, like I'm doing better on my own, you know, uh, so that, that was probably the most freeing thing that I've ever done. It helped me, you know, reconcile with some memories and uh, like terrible past events. So I think that I was able to justify the verses um, with the music video and create this amazing of what I think a lot of people go through in life that nobody wants to talk about. Um, so I'm excited to release that music video in the coming weeks. It was filmed in New York City, so uh, excited to bring about a topic that nobody really ever talks about, but I, I feel like far too many people go through. And, and we'll obviously, when, when the video comes out, because we, we'll put a link on for the new single mm -hmm. with the podcast so people can listen, but we'll share the video as well when um, when that comes out, which will be good. Because it's um, anything with New York or New Jersey. New Jersey. We're all, we're all over it here. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. So, tour-wise, when you tour around Europe, is there going to be, hopefully, more? Are you going to try and get back over to Europe? I hope so. So It's like the best way to live your life, you know? Tra traveling from country to country. I, uh, I'm hoping to put ourselves in a situation where we didn't just kind of rest during quarantine. We went even harder, you know, more music, more releases, more content, more videos so in a situation that the last time we were in Europe, we were here. Now, now we're, we've elevated ourselves, exposed ourselves to far more audience, uh, yeah. far bigger crowds, um, and be able to sell ourselves as a legitimate, you know, bigger package. Um, because my favorite part obviously is the energy during crowd reactions and responses but after the show just going into the audience right then and there like not even wasting any time and meeting as many people as possible because that's the that's why you know we do what we do like the interactions the human connection and i mean there's nothing cool i mean i i can't speak french very well or i speak spanish and italian pretty decently like if my life depended on it I could possibly live. <laughs> French, I would die. But what I'm saying is like, I love trying to converse in, you know, their native language or um, or like real conversation with somebody in Spanish or Italian and just kind of relate on a, a very personal level. So I want to be able to meet as many new people as possible when we're ready to go back out and tour and have that type of lifestyle again. Well, when you come to live at Liverpool again, Obviously, we missed you. We missed you last time you were here, uh, but we'll make sure we we this time we we watch your gig and we also do that little jam that we were supposed to do. Yes, I I can't wait for that. You know, I'm gonna hold you to it. Yes, we missed it last time, so we gotta get it in next time. Um, so it's gonna be exciting for the next twelve months for you. I can see lots of cool things, and you you've started a new little thing the other day. You were helping in the um, in the in the women's shelter in the refuge, play play music as well. Yes, uh, uh, the Center for Hope and Safety is a, a local women's shelter in New Jersey. We actually did a, a live stream during quarantine 
for donations because I think a lot of people forget that they might be safe in their own home, you know, watching Netflix or whatever, but there's a lot of people that unfortunately don't have that safety, that shelter. Um, and so we were able to do a live stream to get donated. And they actually projected the live stream uh, in the shelter for all the kids to watch. So I thought that was like, wow. I was ready to cry. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life, you know? Like, they had a great night that night, and we were able to do that just by singing a couple of songs. So um, anyone in the world that's listening, Center for Hope and Safety, if you want to give a donation. Yeah, we'll obviously use a link or anything. We can we can have a look at that as well, Sam, can't we? And, and, and see. Yeah. It's going to be exciting times for the for, for for going forward. Obviously, this will it'll all come back soon, hopefully, uh, and then you can be back out into into New York, New Jersey, play play these gigs. Have you ever? Uh, this is one thing that I found out. Did you know? Apparently, this is what my friend said when he went. And I've got plex from it. There's a guitar shop under the Chelsea Hotel. I guess I know what I'm doing later this week. <laughs> and apparently, when he was there, he was there uh, last year, and he said, and I think it was, I'll tell you what I think it is. He said, they were in, and the guy said, we're going to shut down. We, we can't afford the rent. Um, and apparently, a big singer or a big artist from your neck of the woods went in and paid the rent for six months. Just said, there's a, I think it was the boss. I, I believe that. He's a good guy. If he wants to pay my rent, that's perfectly fine yeah. by me. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's got enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, watched, uh, I watched Bruce Springsteen because obviously Glastonbury, have, have you heard of Glastonbury? Over, yeah. over Glastonbury's a massive, massive music festival in this country and it's it's got the, some of the biggest acts from all around the world and I watched, there was no Glastonbury obviously this year, but it had past years and I was watching Bruce Springsteen, and um, when he played there last, oh my way! What a what a artist! He's insane, incredible he, performer. And although he, I do like your blue strat, but I have to say my favorite guitar in the whole wide world is the Telecaster. I was gonna say his yellow Tele is really really nice. Well, I wouldn't spin it around my head. I've I've got the guts. I get hit in the head if I do that. <laughs> Guaranteed <laughs> concussion. <laughs> But he, he was, and there was a guy, I forget his name now, but he came over to, to Liverpool and he was in the Sopranos and he's one of the backing guitarists now. Wow. I forget his name now, but I will, I will remind you. That, that, he, played, he came over and played the cavern last year, I think, but he was in the Sopranos and he's, he's in the band with, with Bruce Springsteen, which is yeah. fab. That's so, the dream. <laughs> Going forward, what can you see yourself doing the next 12 months? What's your plan for the next 12 months? Then? Next 12 months is uh, is pretty much release as many songs that I'm proud of as possible. I don't know how many that's going to be. It could be three. It could be seven. It could be ten. Depends how much uh, I think is justifiable to release. I want to release music that will actually speak to people. Like, I know there are certain phrases and chord progressions that you can use to like guarantee a hip hop song and stuff. And like, that's awesome, but I wanna be unique. Uh, and, and I wanna make sure that I am using people's times effectively because I know that everything is like super, super quick. You only have people's attention spans for so long. And when I have them, I wanna make sure that they're enjoying themselves. I wanna make sure it's adding value to their life because then when it comes time for the live shows i know those songs are going to play because those songs have already spoken to those people that took the time to pay, pay money come out come to the show and it's just going to create a better all-around energy so like i said i don't know how many songs we're going to do we definitely have at least uh two more before at least another one before christmas time hits christmas is a little weird when it comes to original music it's not really something you want to release right around then but We've got music videos. Um, we're beginning a blog style behind the scenes um, series on my YouTube channel in the next uh, couple of weeks. And that's that's pretty much it. I really just want on my craft, my band, and make sure that we are ready to have amazing shows, you know, create an amazing energy and experience 
for everybody that is able to hang out with us on a Friday night, you know? And where would be the best place for the people, the audience to follow you social media wise? Uh, definitely Instagram. Um, everything is at Brianna Musco, B-R-I-A-N-N-A-M-U-S-C-O. Uh, Instagram, YouTube is going to be a lot of fun these next couple of months. We're going to be posting a lot of really, really fun um, content that's just, like I was saying, behind the scenes, like almost episodes of A Day in the Life of My Stupidity. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Twitter, I'm not funny, but sometimes, maybe once a month, I'm a little funny. Uh, everything's <laughs> over. And uh, Spotify, of course, is usually the um, best way to hear our music or am Amazon Music, Apple Music. I'm pretty much everywhere. I made sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, Sam, we're, we are at a venue on Friday as well, aren't we? So it's... Um... Do we tell them? Do we tell yeah, them? Yeah, let's tell them. So, guys, we are happy to announce that we're going to be doing a socially distanced podcast at Strawberry Fields. Um, it's in line with the celebrations for John Lennon's birthday, or what would have been his 80th birthday. And I know, Chris, this is quite a big moment for you because you, you just love John Lennon and the Beatles. I do love John Lennon. I, there's a few things that give it away. There's his guitar there. Not his original, though. Do you know what I mean? But uh, And then his a big picture, yeah. But it's going to be exciting and it's going to be really fun. So um, look out for that in the next few weeks, guys. Absolutely. So, guys, that's been another edition of the Sea Live podcast. Thank you so much to our guest, Brianna Musco. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Uh, thank you. Absolute pleasure. And as always, Mr. Christopher Vaughns, thank you so much. I'll see you Friday. I'll see you Friday, mate. Uh, guys, that's been another edition of the Sea Live podcast. Make sure to follow us on all of our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Sea Live on Facebook. Twitter, we are at Sea Live Enter to One. And on Instagram, we are at Sea Live UK. Guys, and also make sure that you check out our website as well with our fantastic tributes, solos, duos, even catering and magicians available for oh, your yeah. pleasure to have a little look at there if you've got a party um, or event that's coming up, obviously, with everything that's going on at the minute with COVID. Um, maybe not, but please do have a look and support the podcast as well. Um, as well. Uh, so guys, that's been another edition of the Sea Live Podcast. Thank you so much. Bye!